and died. Anyway, uh, so I was going to, I'm going to talk about the um, brain imaging data sharing and development of the uh, neuroimaging data model that we've done in the, uh, with the NCF task force. Um, my subtitle is the missing principles and tools. But, um, um, so outline, uh, a brief introduction, then why NIDM, uh, a couple of use cases of NIDM, uh, and then its future. So uh, in a quick... Uh, so let me start with a little bit of a background of uh, the neuroimaging software. Basically, uh, why, do, why do people develop new aging software? Uh, why was SPM, FSL, AFNI, uh, the tools that we've heard about being developed and so on? And uh, take, I mean, usually it's a, it's a method group that really wants to have like a media to, to you know, propose to the world the method. It's also like a little bit of a branding aspect to it. Uh, and so it, you know, it, it's, it's quite good to be able to quickly put out your new research and methods in, in, a, in, a, in the software. And that's a, that was a kind of a, kind of a critical sort of a, a reason why this, the software were developed uh, many, in many instances. Uh, however, uh, software development itself is usually poorly de you know, considered in, uh, in, in the uh, research area, in the academic uh, world. I mean, if you are like, a developer for one of these tools, it's not like a you know, sort of the, uh, stellar position. Uh, and there's poor interoperability between those tools. Uh, and the, basically, the, one of the problem, the main fundamental problem that I want you to think about is that the, uh, the publication aspect is uh, still the main currency that uh, people uh, have for their career and, uh, and so on. And that's, uh, that's a little bit of a, that, that is the kind of the background that uh, you know, so I think we are working with at the moment. Uh, uh, and basically, what, uh, one aspect of that is that there's no provenance, uh, that there's no push to get something that is a provenance that people can get out of the, uh, the results and the data. And there's also little testing of those things. So the consequences is that a group has somehow to promote their software. They, you know, when there's a bug in FSL, it's not like a great thing. You don't uh, you know, advertise it that too much. I mean, that's a, I'm not saying there's a bug in FSL. I'm, uh, I'm being recorded here. Uh, <laughs> but you know, that's, that's the uh, sort of the, the, the sociology of it, right? Um, Code to reproduce paper is usually, if you do a paper, if somebody, a cognitive neuroscientist do, uh, does a paper, uh, it's very rare that the code to actually uh, reproduce the, the analysis and the, 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 the figures and all those things are, is, being, is going to be available. Uh, and I just picked up this number because uh, on looking at uh, the NIH site, uh, I was looking at, you know, out of the uh, 400 uh, millions that are being basically given or you know, fund, funding neuroimaging research, or fMRI research at least, sorry, I should say, uh, how much of that is actually going into the development of tools? Uh, very little of that. So that's the consequence. So what are the consequences? A very deep lack of harmonization and standardization between uh, things. Uh, I would say, I mean, I would like to take uh, and tell you the story of the Nifty standard. Again, if Nifty is one of the standards that we are all working with, it's, it's a very good thing to have this standard. Many people are saying this is a really bad format, this is like a horrible thing to, uh, to have done, and there's some mistakes in this, uh, in the way uh, you know, it's been uh, developed and so on. Sure, it is great to have Nifty. That's, that's the, my message. There's basically a lack of uh, reusability. I mean, there's an enormous waste. If, if you look at the research being produced, there's an enormous waste of resources. Uh, when, you, when the only product that of a, a two or three years uh, work is a couple of papers, and then no one can actually reuse the methods and the, the, the things that you've been developing to actually produce those papers, it's a, how much, you know, this is enormous waste. Uh, and that's one of the things that uh, we have to really think about. Uh, and there's a lack of reproducibility. Is that there is a reproducibility crisis. Uh, I think uh, how many of those papers are out there can actually be reproduced and give, you, give us the same result. It's not very clear, and, uh, and we, I mean, there's a number of papers now showing, like uh, starting with Button, et al. Like, like the, there's the power issue, but there's also the, you know, the availability and of the code and the software that uh, needs to be. Uh, I think that's, uh, that's I mean, I, I would say in my field, in the neuroimaging field, there is definitely a reproducibility crisis. Uh, and I think we have to think, okay, how much can I reproduce my colleague uh, uh, results before I, I do something? So the missing principle, if you f publicly funded to do some research, uh, the code and the data that you're acquiring or you're developing are not your code. There's something that you've been basically funded for so they should be going back to the community, to the scientific community. And actually, if you're a good scientist, if you're interested in the stuff, that's a natural thing to do. 
the problem is that we are working in this economy of science where you need to sort of uh, you know publish and, and adver advertise your stuff to survive in that environment. So that's one of the key problems. Um, and basically, research is about acknowledging knowledge. So if you have so developing software, you should be able, I mean, that uh, one thing you should be thinking is reproducing and validating and testing this software and making sure that they can be reused uh, in an efficient way. So uh, adopting a culture where we spend more time in doing uh, sort of this, this low paced thing that we need to, to do to make sure that they can be, uh, the, our products can be reasonable, it's, a, it's, a long, it's more like a long term thing than rather than a short term thing. And that's, that's the uh, cultural aspect of the, of the problem. So what are the, our goals in, uh, in this uh, task force and the, and the development of the um, neuroimaging data model? Well, uh, it's basically going to sort of uh, go a little bit of against the current. Uh, and we want to make sure that we can, if possible, have a comprehensive data sharing, enhance the reproducibility, enhance reusability, increase interoperability, discover data, discover software, uh, enable new research and ideas when you, when you have those things available. Uh, and the challenge is that there's no easy tool, missing metadata, things are not discoverable, the data, and if you look for data on the web, that it's very hard to get them, it's very hard to get them documented, and so on. There's a multiple software because of the e economy of the thing, uh, and there's very limited funding, as I was uh, telling you before. And there's no common standard. I mean, there's very little common standard. Thanks God, that's nifty. Um, so we need a common language, and we need a method to construct it. So what are we trying to do? We're trying to basically look at, uh, from the, uh, the paper, which is the, the end result, and sort of, unfortunately, sort of the, the almost only result that is uh, really looked at by funding agencies or, or committees on, the, on the hiring uh, in universities. And so we, instead of having the, the thing, the, you know, our product to be only one publication, we want to get all the things that have been done before to be able to be reused and to be linked to that publication so that we can reproduce, validate, reuse. And the whole thing should possibly be linked and, and should be linked really. If you have a paper and a result that is somewhere in that paper, you really want to be able to go back to the raw data. You want to be able to go back to the analysis and workflows and so on. How do we avoid the, the classical problem? You know, we, we, we need a standard, we need to communicate. There's already like uh, N ways of doing that and uh, you know, trying to do uh, something with that, we're going to just create a new one. That's, uh, and how we do, so we are really have to think of this, uh, the, both the technical issues of trying to uh, uh, link those data and, uh, and share those data and, uh, and, and software, but also the kind of the social and engineering aspect of it. And that's, that's probably even more difficult to solve. And that's the thing, so therefore, if it's difficult to solve, that's the thing we should concentrate our attention and energy on as well. Anyway, NIDM, a data model shared and co-developed, that's one of the answers, that you, it has to be a community sort of tool. Uh, the methodology that we try to weekly have calls that are sometimes painful and uh, long discussions on things that uh, will get people frustrated and so on. Uh, there's a, a number of tools that we can use, though, uh, technical tools to help in that process. Uh, Git, GitHub have been like a huge you know, help in this, uh, in this process. Uh, doing the pull request and so on, hackathon, uh, and getting the tools developers on board. If I'm doing something in your imaging, I need the FSL, the SPM, the AFNI, the free software guys to be on board with what I'm doing. Otherwise, it's not going to be going very far. And I just want to acknowledge those guys, and especially those, the, the, person, the people being uh, involved in the NIDM uh, uh, development, Camille, Carl, Jess, uh, Guillaume, that is on the photo, Nolan, of course, Satra. Uh, I'm going to miss some of those, so I'm sorry about that. But uh, it's, uh, it's, it's really, uh, it's been, a, Chris, of course, the, it's been really a great pleasure uh, to, uh, to work with the, uh, the people. And, and the, the social aspect uh, has been really sort of started with uh, the, uh, the Neuro Bureau and the, and the Brain Hack people, uh, and Cameron who is, is one of the main uh, players in that in that field and really getting people together to co-develop things is uh, one of the uh, answer to the social problem. So what is NIDM? Uh, it is a, a way of describing data, software, uh, methods, um, results of the methods uh, in a way that is as, as, as much as we can common and queryable uh, and, and what, uh, what does it use? It uses the semantic web technology 
technologies, uh, basically RDF Sparkle, and then the prov specification, and then some vocabulary that uh, uh, when we can we take from outside. Uh, and it takes from the it goes from the experimental design and, and data to the to the workflow and then to the results. Uh, and with the idea that all those things can be queried across uh, these layers. And we have focused a lot on the NIDRM results, so you'll see some example of that. Just want to go back to the prof model. Can you give me a head back when uh, I'm uh, five minutes away? Yeah, yeah? okay, thank you. Uh, because I, I forgot to put my timing on. So, uh, uh, and the prof model is, is something that uh, helps you structure uh, how you describe things. It, it's not like a, a magic answer to anything. It's a, a little bit of a, uh, you know, it, it just helps to structure things. It is, you know, as agent entity activities, and you can do many things just with that, and, uh, and, and that's enough for us to describe our world. Uh, an IDM experiment is the idea that you use that prof model to describe this, uh, an experimental data set that goes from the, the project to the actual the study, and then the, the actual acquisitions and all those files. And use those agents, uh, agent activities and entities to describe this, you know, what is being done to the data, how it's been acquired, and so on. And we've got, uh, thanks to Dave, uh, Kater, they, we've got the, uh, and, and uh, you know, all the group, uh, the uh, NIDM specifications on GitHub, where you can go and see, okay, how do I do that? How do I, you know, start with, my, with uh, describing this uh, experimental data with an IDM uh, model. Uh, and we've got an, an overview of that, a primer, we've run, trying to start to run um, uh, training sessions on those things, uh, and we've got uh, uh, experiment and result uh, aspect to, to it. And again, the social aspect of GitHub was really helping uh, us, in, us in the process. The use case, the first use case I'm taking quickly, because you've seen that yesterday, is one from Dave. Uh, the Conti Center taking the, the data, uh, getting a model of those data, uh, spitting out some total files, some uh, uh, with a serialization of RDF, and then putting a virtual database, which is a, a Sparkle, uh, you know, a Sparkle endpoint where you can query things directly from the total file, from the uh, the the, the, uh, the set of uh, of triplets, uh, and then from those things you can construct your uh, um, GUI or anything you want to to display those information. Uh, just a quick, uh, well, I think what is important and interesting that uh, Dave also pointed yesterday is that the, uh, there is a comprehensive and long-lasting markup of those things. So comprehensive, it means that if uh, the heartbeat was recorded, it was actually the heartbeat of both the mother and the fetus, and those things are encoded. Everything that, all this information that we not do not yet what is the information that is going to be very useful in the future, if we can, we put it in. And it's a long-lasting thing. FreeSurfer, an example of FreeSurfer, it's a domain object of FreeSurfer, is a very used uh, tool, of course, in the neuroimaging community. And, and again, the idea was to go, to go from uh, the uh, experimental information to the workflow of uh, information and then to the results information. And, uh, and, and the, uh, the idea is that, that with a, a, sort of a few lines of code, <laughs> uh, which are, you know, sometimes uh, you have to dig into, I mean, you have to sort of dive into that. It's good to dive in, you know, in Cairns, that's always good. Um, and uh, and you, you can actually uh, get those information encoded in uh, using, uh, using the, our Python tool, the Python tools to, uh, to encode the, uh, this information. Uh, and then when you've done that, you can link to other data, like uh, the uh, uh, FMA, you can link to other tools if they are uh, already marked up as well, uh, because you can merge different graphs of information using this uh, semantic web technology. Third use case, the fMRI statistical result, that's the, the one that is the most developed, uh, thanks to Camille. Uh, and basically, uh, again, what you're looking here is the use of those software in the community for fMRI, and you see that uh, the uh, there's a, uh, we took the first free software that are the most used to uh, start to develop this model uh, across the software. And we have really like a SPM and FSL uh, and uh, AFNI still on the way. And this is the, the model. So uh, in uh, fMRI, task activation based uh, tools, we, we start from a, a design, an experimental design. We, have, we construct the model, we take the data, we construct from the data uh, T maps that you've seen uh, with Marta and uh, other talks before. And so those are statistical maps. And then uh, these statistical maps, we do some inference on those to select the regions that are significant across those voxels. Uh, and this model is just a, uh, the model of that process and all the entities that are being created from the activities of, let's say, doing an inference or doing uh, a contrast estimation or these sort of things. 
And the model is not going to be exactly the same for uh, SPM or FSL. So this, uh, these are the difference. So if you can query on the things that are common to those two models, uh, but there are, you also can query and say, OK, I want something specific that is only in FSL, or I want something specific that is only in SPM. And you can do that with, this, uh, with those queries. What is the use case of that? Well, how are we going to use those things? Because if you don't have like, a good use case to say to convince the neuroscience community that it's going to be useful, you're, you're not going to go very far. Uh, and the use case that uh, we started with is the meta-analysis. So coding all this information for the results of those software is really important for meta-analysis. The usual way meta-analysis was done in the past and will be done for, uh, I'm sure, a long time, is to have the XYZ coordinates of the papers to be uh, taken out, and then you construct some sort of maps of those XYZ coordinates for a specific domain, a cognitive domain or, or a pathology domain. And that's uh, what uh, NeuroSync has been done for. It is very successful. It's a great tool developed by uh, uh, Tal Yarconi, and it, it's, just a, it's just a great thing to have. Uh, we think it's not enough. So the meta-analysis we can do with uh, uh, the uh, marked up uh, results from SPM and FSL from, uh, with the NIGM model is that we, instead of having just the XYZ coordinates that are in tables in uh, possibly papers, you have actually the uh, T-maps that are images uh, that can be shared, and I'll show you how, but you also have all the information on those T-maps that is really useful for meta-analysis that has been marked up. So you, will, you know now the smoothness, the error model, the contrast direction, things that were completely missing in uh, previous meta-analysis. Brandspell is another tool that we're working with that is actually uh, a tagging tool on, on papers. There's a vast amount of papers that are legacy, and, and we want to still be able to use that, but how do you use that if you don't have the right information directly coded out from the output of the software like SPM or FSL? Well, you can take Brandspell and start to tag and say, okay, this, uh, this actual uh, contrast in this, in this direction, it comes from this cognitive atlas domain and so on. And so you have more information uh, you can code it, and our plan is to actually extract from that an IDM model. I was telling you, the contrast images, uh, they, they can be shared easily. That's thanks to Chris now. There's, uh, he's constructed this uh, great tool, the NeuroVault, that you can actually push all those contrast images and, have, and push those contrast images that have been spit out by SPM and FSL with the NIDM information. So we have now in NeuroVault the capacity to have all the information that SPM and FSL has, have done in the, when they're constructing their, their T-maps. That's a fantastic thing. We're really making progress there. And there's also so there's uh, this uh, this uh, little project with uh, Nif and uh, Jeff and uh, Marianne and uh, and Dave Kennedy to try to see how we can uh, take the the papers that are not yet entirely being published but will be published and mark those papers with some terms that are going to be in an IDM model and therefore have some more like a, the, a social aspect to it where we can, we can say to the, 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 uh, uh, the, the authors, oh, that's great, your paper is accepted, but if you really want to make it really useful, you should mark all those things in that paper. And that's something we, we've been working on. It, it's a parallel little thing that should be then merged with the automatic things that have been already uh, out from uh, SPM, SPM and FSL. So we're, we're basically trying, we're linking those things because we have the same model to mark them up. Queries. The key thing here is that once you've got all those information marked up, you really want to have the power to query that. And the standard uh, W3C thing for the, those queries is Sparkle language. The great thing with that is that you, you may have a, a graph that is an output of an, an, an analysis somewhere on the web, and then another graph that is an output of another analysis somewhere else on the web, or something local. You can merge all those graphs and do a query across those graphs. So create a common graph across those resources. Problems for me, and I don't know enough about that topic, so I won't linger on it. But basically, I mean, how is that going to scale? How, what's the efficiency of those tools? Uh, we have been, been using Virtuoso, but there's also other tools that are possible. Uh, and all those, and how is it going to uh, you know, actually work in real life uh, completely? I think that's still, those questions are still to be experimented and, and, uh, and tried upon. 
and I show my colleagues, Nolan or others, will uh, uh, jump in and, and tell me a bit more about that. Um, I think we also need tools for uh, neuroscientists so that, I mean, not everyone is going to write up the Sparkle query. Uh, so we need tools to actually make I mean, those, uh, those query uh, easy uh, across uh, various resources. And we need to train neuroscientists. I think if you really want to be a good cognitive neuroscientist or, or, or neuroimager, uh, you actually do need to learn those techniques at some stage to be able to uh, free yourself from the tools that are being developed and actually develop your own ideas and develop your own queries that would be useful. So the training of the community is going to be critical uh, for that, in that matter. So this is an example of a query. I don't think uh, we'll go uh, into it, but uh, we have a number of examples in uh, iPython notebooks, or Jupyter notebooks now, uh, in, uh, our, in the GitHub repo of the uh, task force. Uh, and, and this is just a, a way, uh, you probably can't see it, but it's just a way of showing that how simple it is to actually merge two graphs uh, to do a query on those two graphs. But the thing I, I was pointing out is that uh, queries can start to be a little bit complicated, and again, uh, the, the, we, we do need to sort of start. So this is the uh, query to get the x, y, z coordinates from the, uh, the SPM FSL models. Uh, and that's going to be, uh, you know, not everybody is going to write that. So that we will have to have tools to do that for people. And these tools are started to be developed. So I think that's uh, uh, Satra and Camille have developed, uh, started to develop an IDM result viewer that works in the, on the browser. So you can point to an IDM result uh, FSL on SPM and then get all the, uh, the team apps, the, all the uh, coordinates, all the information that NADM has marked up uh, in, uh, in tables. So what are the results of NADM results? <laughs> uh, well, we've got an, uh, a free software converter, an FSL converter, a native SPM exporter. Uh, if need people are engaged in the project, We've lost the ZIA that have gone to uh, industry, but that's uh, hopefully we'll recover from that. Uh, and, and so therefore, we, I think we have like, the, a wide community of neuroimaging tools and, and, and the most widely used tools uh, to be on board with that project. So hopefully, there is a chance that we, this is going to work. Uh, open fMRI data, an IDM result for both SPM and FSL are there. Neuro, NeuroVault ingest an IDM results. We're working with Brandspell and NeuroSync. Uh, Bids, which is the new format that Chris was telling you yesterday, uh, is going to be have uh, like the IDM export where you can tag more information that Bids cannot uh, have because it's just a simple data, data structure to make sure that it is easily uh, write up by people that don't actually do uh, coding usually. So that's, uh, that's, that's uh, things, uh, these things are happening. Uh, it's a very exciting time. Uh, NIDM has been used in the Conte Center that uh, Dev was talking about. That's, that's a real life application uh, uh, in Encanda. Uh, we're working with Cameron from the uh, NKI uh, data set and so on. So there, there will be more and more uh, big data set and uh, you know, data set of, uh, I mean, uh, uh, spread across the, uh, the, the, the internet uh, that will be marked up with, uh, with an IDM. And uh, as a result of those interactions, there have been like four grants that have been submitted that will have in part some IDM development aspect to, to them. So that's, uh, I think that's, uh, that's a success. The one thing that I want to point quickly before finishing is that uh, when, how do we understand to each other? How do we construct a, 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 a you know, common language? Well, first of all, we have to know exactly what is our goal. And that's, uh, that's not always the easy thing. Uh, do we have the same goal, exactly? Uh, we have a, we, I think we have a common grammar somehow with the IDM model, uh, with the prov uh, W3C. Uh, and then we need a common vocabulary. We need to make sure that we don't reinvent the wheel each time, and we need to take the time to not reinvent the wheel. Uh, so uh, if we are developing something with an IDM, you have to search for terms, then you have to use the uh, standard uh, ontologies and uh, lexicons that are on the web, and then if nothing is appropriate for that, then only you add something, and you add something by discussing it on the web, by using some sort of a technique that we've developed for uh, the an IDM result. Uh, 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 the NIDM results, we've developed this sort of methodology where you discuss the term uh, and takes time and it's boring, but it is very useful at the end. So where do you look for terms? Neuralex, Obofoundry, FMA, a Cognitive Atlas, uh, but also all those uh, standard uh, uh, domain names on, on the web, DCT, of course, and so on. Uh, and if you haven't found anything, then you, you, know, you, you create something and you discuss with your colleagues. 
So why is this whole enterprise maybe working? Uh, I think there's a good spirit. Uh, I think we all understand the sort of the the, the problem we are going to want to solve. Uh, there's a, we've, we're basing our sort of a way of working on the uh, open source community's way of working. Uh, we have a very strong uh, neuroimaging in Python and open source ecosystem that is sort of a, a kind of an underlying layer to that uh, enterprise. Uh, we are trying to solve a problem that is in the domain that we know. If I take all the people in the task force and uh, run that are you know, working on that thing, this is uh, hundreds of, of experience in the domain. Uh, and we have a little bit of uh, funding from uh, NCF and, uh, and soon hopefully a bit more from uh, NIH to, uh, to do that. But I think the key thing is that we have the uh, great individuals in, the, you know, in this task force that are really motivated and that do that on their leisure time and they're, they're taking some time to uh, you know, do a, like a bit of a two days hackathon and so on. I think that, that's the key aspect and they're knowledgeable and they just uh, have the good spirit. But our difficulties, it's hard because everyone has you know, its own little agenda and next goal to it. So it's not, it's, you know, coordination of those things are not easy. Uh, it's a still a small developer community. We need to do more uh, training on that. Uh, software development is not well considered in the research academy sort of uh, world. Uh, most researchers have domain knowledge but have a uh, little skill. So there's a, there's a learning curve that is really uh, a steep uh, to get there. But I think it is necessary to do that training. Current future work, NADM experiment, I've told you about that. We should link with NDAR as well. There's uh, all those uh, database world that we are l linking as well. So XNAT, Loris, and so on. Samir is around here to uh, help us with that. Uh, NADM workflow, there's a little uh, specific group with uh, Tristan and uh, others uh, uh, from uh, you know, the world, like uh, NIPIPE, of course, with Chris and so on, uh, that we are trying to get uh, this markup thing, uh, markup NDM, uh, NADM markup for workflows. Uh, and the uh, IDM results will you know, expand with other software uh, and so on when it's proved its uh, utility. Again, I'd like to acknowledge people. I also would like to acknowledge uh, Matthew, Rosa, Eva, Christina, and Linda, and all the secretary. And uh, thank you for the invitation for the talking today. Oh, yeah. Thank you, thank you Jean Baptiste, for. This is Guillaume. Yeah, he doesn't want to have this photo on the way, but this is Guillaume Trondin here. <laughs> okay, sorry. So, yeah. Gary, you have a question? Um, that was great, JB. So my question is about how to move ahead in having researchers adopt some of these uh, improved um, reproducibility tests and so on. And clearly having the tools available is a key requirement, but I'm wondering if from a publication perspective, you think journals could have a staged way of increasing the quality of research that's being submitted? For example, as you mentioned, you know, power analyses is one sort of requirement it could be, and also some of the other metrics that you've pointed out here. Do you see a way forward in trying to sort of implement this across the community? So I think there's several questions there. I mean, uh, there's the how do we move like the general evaluation academic thing to account more for software, and there are sort of little things starting. I mean, there will, there will be like a, I think in nature neuroscience a little bit of a advocacy, small you know things on uh, how software is really important and like a, and how you should be testing it and so on. There there are sort of like a things like because of the reproducibility crisis, people start to understand that. Uh, there's a need to consider that bit to be really critical and not to sort of uh, focus only on the uh, publication of the uh, uh, scientific results that are possibly not the scientific results in, uh, in uh, some cases. Uh, so, so I think that that's the kind of a, like a, the general advocacy aspect to it. We just need to increase the awareness of the community that this is a critical thing. And if you you're working in your imaging, you would never think of not training yourself in your anatomy. I mean, your anatomy, you have to know some anatomy. If you're working in neuroimaging, you have to know a little bit of uh, you know, software development. That's, that's the same sort of, uh, you know, we, we know to have the tools of the trade, right? Um, and that's, so that's, that's one, one aspect to it. And the other aspect is that to engage specifically uh, maybe publication, uh, 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 journals to say, to say, okay, that's uh, uh, something on the software is a valid contribution to science. Uh, and I think Giga Science, for instance, is doing something which uh, you have a paper and you have uh, in Galaxy kind of thing, uh, like uh, your tool that is available. Uh, so, uh, and I think more and more journals are on board with that. Uh, and the thing to engage all the community of the developing tools, I mean, it's, it's just have to be coming from bottom up and, uh, 
and people realizing that uh, you know, working on your own little thing is the, probably maybe the best strategy in the short term to get the next grant or the next uh, paper. It's not the best strategy for the, uh, the scientific community. Any other questions or comments? I suppose from the chair, I mean, we we're all talking about the, the need to share data and big data and this sort of thing, and yet, and you make the comment that there's little money for software development, and yet so many people are seeking funds to develop yet another alternative, or taking, the fo taking 14 methods and, and developing the 15th method to go with it. So, you know, how do we as a community say, yeah, let's let's work together and I mean yeah. you're doing a great job to do that, but we've got to we as a community have to come along and be part of that yeah. and say we don't need to go and yet develop yet a a fifteenth or a sixteenth or whatever method. Yeah, and, and, and universities really have to develop ways of uh, hiring uh, at a, like a, a position for people that are they're, they're really good at that thing, uh, developing and, uh, and linking things for, the, uh, for, the, uh, for neuroscience in this instance. I think that's, that's one of the key also aspects. So it's a bit of an argument we've got to have with our, yeah. our universities and that as to what, what uh, the benchmarks are for, for our staff as to, you know, at the moment it's you know, first author publications, uh, is unfortunately and grants and that sort of thing, and we all understand that problem. So yeah, there is. But I think you've demonstrated re really why we need to go down a way of, of common data um, curation. Okay, so thank you very much.